I mean, my goodness, there was only one team on the field tonight. And so we will talk about the result uh, and the performance. And obviously, we will talk about the rumored return of Greg Berhalter and what that means going forward here, what, three years away from 2026. I mentioned David Mossy. Uh, who, who, for those of you that listen or watch our State of the Union podcast, and you should be watching it, please subscribe and rate and do all the different things that you do. You know David Mossy. He's a uh, soccer savant and a Fox soccer researcher and writer extraordinaire. Mossy, how you how you doing, my friend? Uh, that was an interesting night, huh? And an interesting game. It was, yeah. And for me, it started an hour before kickoff because the U.S. lineup came out first. And I cannot remember the last U.S. game where they put out a lineup that had a hundred percent approval rating on Twitter. <laughs> everybody loved the lineup that BJ Callahan put out in the absence of Tim Ream and Tyler Adams. Everybody felt like this was the possible best possible way for him to go. They went with Turner and goal, Dest and Anthony Robinson, the fullbacks, Chris Richards, Miles Robinson, center of defense, McKinney and Musa sitting rain as the 10 Pulisic, Wea and Balian. And then shortly thereafter, the Mexico lineup comes out. And it was so underwhelming. I know they're missing Chucky Lozano and Tecatito Corona and then Diego Coca in what I think might be his final match as Mexico <laughs> boss uh, exacerbated the issue by starting Henry Martin instead of Santi Jimenez. But you looked at the two lineups side by side and you just felt like there was such a huge gap in talent. And then you think, well, it's a rivalry game, so maybe that'll even it out. You know, all those cliches about yeah. rivalries. But no, uh, it was a match that reflected the difference in quality between the two teams. And I do think and I said this also after the two octagonal games, that 2-0 U.S. win in Cincinnati and then the 0-0 at Azteca where the U.S. was the better team. We might be crossing a Rubicon in this rivalry where the U.S. might be blowing past Mexico. And I wonder where this rivalry goes, if there's any way back from Mexico or if the U.S. is going to a place as a soccer nation in terms of the caliber of talents producing that Mexico is just not going to be able to keep up anymore. Well, they need to keep up. And it's not our problem to make Mexico keep up. Now, notwithstanding the cooperation and the partnerships and the continued interaction that we as American soccer and whether it's Major League Soccer or anybody else out there has with it. But that pendulum or we used to talk about the gap. Well, you know, that gap has widened significantly. And to your point, is it to the is it at a place where Mexico can't recover? And I guess more to the point, should I care? And and I I I guess I care. But tonight it, it as I said, it never gets old. I I love every minute of it. Um, was this the best US Mexico game that we've ever seen? No, but it had all the hallmarks of what I feel is the greatest international rivalry, and that is U.S.-Mexico. And you had red cards, and you had people, you know, throwing stuff on the field. I don't, I, listen, I'm not condoning that, uh, and I'm certainly not condoning the uh, chant. And ultimately, when it comes to El Tree fans, that was all they were left with, was the offensive chant that put a stop to the game multiple times, as it should have. have. But on the field, to your point, Mossy, uh, underwhelming, uh, to say the least, they could not get anything together when it came to possession. They could not get any, anything together in terms of any type of consistent um, danger uh, that was, uh, you know, that was put at the foot of uh, of Matt Turner. And on the other side, and I and I don't want to, you know, say it's all about a crap Mexico team. You play the team that's in front of you, but. You know, it has to be said, and certainly in that first half, Christian Pulisic was a man possessed. He almost scored one of the great goals in U.S. Uh, men's national team history and certainly one of the great goals in U.S.-Mexico history and dribbled through basically everybody. And his speed with the ball is, it, I mean, it never ceases to amaze me. We watched him enough now, but the, the speed in which he was able to get to the ball, go around the defender and continue on in and did all the hard work. And then the easy thing for at least getting the ball on net he wasn't able to do that. Doesn't matter because he ended up scoring again, and his run for his uh, for his second goal was absolutely phenomenal. He passed everybody, including Balogun. We'll talk about it in a second. And Tim Weah doing what he does so well over there on the right hand side uh, was wonderful. Yes, there were red cards, and yes, this U.S. team is going to not have some important players like Weston McKinney for this final. And sometimes we forget that there actually is another game, by the way, against our friends from the North Canada who uh, completely destroyed Panama. So, you know, all in all, this is a, an amazing and, and just a, this is such a typical American soccer night with all of these crazy things kind of going on, on 
and off the field. From a competitive standpoint, this is mwah, chef's kiss. I will take it. I don't care how it ultimately happens. There was all the ugliness and all the craziness that goes on when you have these games. But ultimately, there was also some really good soccer and some really good performances, not the least of which was the man that you want to have good performances, and that is uh, Christian Pulisic. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops every week. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.